Hello again and welcome back to Wendy's Way. Today we're continuing our journey in faith. We're reading again in our Bible 365 series. So far we have read through the books of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Job. And we are nearing the end of the book of Numbers. Today will be day 64 of 365 and we are going to be reading Numbers chapters 23 through 25. I'm so glad you've joined me. I do apologize for the nearly week-long absence. You know, it uh, it's springtime and things get busy and I do apologize. There is uh, no excuse when I make a commitment I need to follow through. So we are going to work diligently to follow the path that we set for ourselves. All right, please join me in reading God's Word. Chapter 23 And Balaam said to Balak, Build for me here seven altars, and prepare for me here seven bulls and seven rams. Balak did as Balaam had said, and Balak and Balaam offered on each altar a bull and a ram. And Balaam said to Balak, Stand beside your burnt offering, and I will go. Perhaps the Lord will come to meet me, and whatever he shows me I will tell you. And he went to a bare height, and God met Balaam. And Balaam said to him, I have arranged the seven altars, and I have offered on each altar a bull and a ram. And the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth and said, Return to Balak, and thus you shall speak. And he returned to him, and behold, he and all the princes of Moab were standing beside his burnt offering. And Balaam took up his discourse and said, From Aram Balak has brought me, the king of Moab from the east mountains. Come, curse Jacob for me, and come, denounce Israel. How can I curse whom God has not cursed? How can I denounce whom the Lord has not denounced? For from the top of the crags I see him. From the hills I behold him. Behold, a people dwelling alone and not counting itself among the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob or number the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the upright and let my end be like his. And Balak said to Balaam, What have you done to me? I took you to curse my enemies, and behold, you have done nothing but bless them. And he answered and said, Must I not take care to speak what the Lord puts in my mouth? And Balak said to him, Please come with me to another place from which you may see them. You shall see only a fraction of them and shall not see them all. Then curse them for me from there. The man doesn't listen, does he? And he took him to the top of Zophim, to the top of Pisgah, and built seven altars and offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Balaam said to Balak, Stand here beside your burnt offering while I meet the Lord over there. And the Lord met Balaam and put a word in his mouth and said, Return to Balak, and thus shall you speak. And he came to him, and behold, he was standing beside his burnt offering, and the princes of Moab with him. And Balak said to him, What has the Lord spoken? And Balaam took up his discourse and said, Rise, Balak, and hear. Give ear to me, O son of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie, or a son of man that he should change his mind. Has he said, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken, and will he not fulfill it? Behold, I received a command to bless. He has blessed, and I cannot revoke it. He has not beheld misfortune in Jacob, nor has he seen trouble in Israel. The Lord their God is with them, and the shout of a king is among them. 
God brings them out of Egypt and is for them like the horns of the wild ox. For there is no enchantment against Jacob, no divination against Israel. Now it shall be said of Jacob and Israel, what has God brought? Behold a people, as a lioness it rises up, and as a lion it lifts itself. It does not lie down until it has devoured the prey and drunk the blood of the slain. And Balak said to Balaam, Do not curse them all, and do not bless them at all. But Balaam answered Balak, Did I not tell you all that the Lord says that I must do? And Balak said to Balaam, Come now, I will take you to another place. Perhaps it will please God that you may curse them from there. So Balak took Balaam to the top of Peor, which overlooks the desert. And Balaam said to Balak, Build for me here seven altars, and prepare for me here seven bulls and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had said, and offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Wow, the dude just doesn't give up. He doesn't listen. He doesn't understand. And I think Balaam and the Lord are showing Great patience. Chapter 24. When Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he did not go, as at other times, to look for omen, but set his face toward the wilderness. And Balaam lifted up his eyes and saw Israel camping tribe by tribe. And the Spirit of God came upon him, and he took up his discourse and said, the oracle of Balaam, the son of Beor, the oracle of the man whose eye is opened, the oracle of him who hears the words of God, who sees the vision of the Almighty, falling down with his eyes uncovered. How lovely are your tents, O Jacob, your encampments, O Israel, like palm groves that stretch afar, like gardens beside a river, like aloes that the Lord has planted, like cedar trees beside the waters. Water shall flow from his buckets, and his seed shall be in many waters. His king shall be higher than Agog, and his kingdom shall be exalted. God brings him out of Egypt, and is for him like the horns of the wild ox. He shall eat up the nations, his adversaries, and shall break their bones in pieces, and pierce them through with his arrows. He crouched, he lay down like a lion, and like a lioness, who will rouse him? Blessed are those who bless you, and cursed are those who curse you. And Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam, and he struck his hands together. And Balak said to Balaam, I called you to curse my enemies, and behold, you have blessed them these three times. Therefore, now flee to your own place. I said, I will certainly honor you, but the Lord has held you back from honor. And Balaam said to Balak, Did I not tell you your messengers whom you sent to me? If Balak should give me his house full of silver and gold, I would not be able to go beyond the word of the Lord to do either good or bad of my own will. What the Lord speaks, that will I speak. And now, behold, I am going to my people. Come, I will let you know what this people will do to your people in the latter days. And he took up his discourse and said, The oracle of Balaam, the son of Beor, the oracle of the man whose eye is opened, the oracle of him who hears the words of God and knows the knowledge of the Most High, who sees the vision of the Almighty falling down with his eyes uncovered. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. It shall crush the forehead of Moab, and break down all the sons of Sheth. Edom shall be dispossessed. 
Sire also, his enemies, shall be dispossessed. Israel is doing valiantly, and one from Jacob shall exercise dominion and destroy the survivors of cities. Then he looked on Amalek and took up his discourse and said, Amalek was the first among the nations, but its end is utter destruction. And he looked on the Canaanite, and he took up his discourse and said, Enduring is your dwelling place, and your nest is set in the rock. Nevertheless, Cain shall be burned when Asher takes you away captive. And he took up his discourse and said, Alas, who shall live when God does this? But ships shall come from Kittim, and shall afflict Asher and Eber, and he too shall come to utter destruction. Then Balaam rose and went back to his place, and Balak also went his way. Chapter 25 While Israel lived in Shittim, the people began to whore with the daughters of Moab. These invited the people to the sacrifices of their gods, and the people ate and bowed down to their gods. So Israel yoked herself to Baal of Peor, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And the Lord said to Moses, Take all the chiefs of the people and hang them in the sun before the Lord, that the fierce anger of the Lord may turn away from Israel. And Moses said to the judges of Israel, Each of you kill those of his men who have yoked themselves to Baal of Peor. And behold, one of the people of Israel came and brought a Midianite woman to his family in the sight of Moses and in the sight of the whole congregation of the people of Israel, while they were weeping in the entrance of the tent of meeting. When Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, son of Aaron the priest, saw it, he rose and left the congregation and took a spear in his hand and went after the man of Israel into the chamber and pierced both of them, the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. Thus the plague on the people of Israel was stopped. Nevertheless, those who died by the plague were 24,000. It's an illustration again of why the Lord at that time didn't want intercultural relationships and marriages. Had nothing to do with the society, had, I mean, nothing to do with race or anything like that. It wasn't utter racism. It was because he knew that the Israelites were weak. They were weak and sinful people, as we still are. And in order for them to stay following him, he needed to keep them autonomous and focused. Because, you know, when they fell in with the people of Moab, first thing they did was start bowing down to those gods and worshiping those gods instead of him alone. That's the reason from my perspective. And the Lord said to Moses, Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, son of Aaron the priest, has turned back my wrath from the people of Israel, in that he was jealous with my jealousy among them, so that I did not consume the people of Israel in my jealousy. Therefore say, behold, I give to him my covenant of peace, and it shall be to him and to his descendants after him the covenant of a perpetual priesthood, because he was jealous for his God and made atonement for the people of Israel. The name of the slain man of Israel who was killed with the Midianite woman was Zimri, the son of Salu, chief of a father's house belonging to the Simeonites. And the name of the Midianite woman who was killed was Cosby, the daughter of Zur, who was the tribal head of a father's house of Midian. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, 
Harass the Midianites and strike them down, for they have harassed you with their wiles, with which they beguiled you in the matter of Peor and in the matter of Cosby, the daughter of the chief of Midian, their sister, who was killed on the day of the plague on account of Peor. All right, this is our Bible 365 reading for today in the book of Numbers. I pray that you'll join me again tomorrow. I also pray that the Lord who blesses me so completely each and every day of my life will bless you as well, today and always. Amen.